and welcome back to CS38 Racing. This is episode 5 of the Red Bull Rookies Cup, and we are going to be in Finland. So we've only got three more races to go, including this one. And then we'll see if we can get ourselves into the Moto3 World Championship. Alright, so we've got sunny qualifying and sunny race. Alright, see you guys down in qualifying. Alright, down here in qualifying, let's go through and skip to the last... Actually, I don't know how long a lap is here, so we'll see once a lap comes in. That'll be our marker. So 159, so let's go out with three minutes to go. Alright. We'll go to track. Flying start. Alright, let's see if we can get in a good pole lap here. And if that's the case, then we can start on pole. If not, oh well. We'll fight through. Yeah, so I haven't actually seen the MotoGP or really any of the, the Grand Prix paddock race here in Finland. Um, primarily due to COVID, uh, but they have tested here, so that's good. Alright, here we go. A lap around the Kimi ring. Oh, don't really know my brake markers here. So this might not be as strong a qualifying. But that's okay, that makes it more interesting for you, the viewer. So make sure if you guys like this content to hit that like bot button, blah, button, hit that like button, not button, button. Um, because it really helps out the channel, lets me know what you guys like watching. Uh, and if you guys like watching it, I can keep putting more of it out. So as we come down this long back straight, just managed to keep it in track limits there. Oop, a bit on the curbs into the very technical term flip floppy section. When I have played on the Kimi Ring track in, was it in GP19? I think they had it in GP19. Oh, GP20, that's it. When I played in GP20, I never really enjoyed the circuit that much. It was kind of a circuit that I came up to in the season, hoping that I had some good point leads. Because um, I never really... Oh, there we go. Jumped the corner. So we're going to be starting from the back of the grid. Alright, okay, so let's see how we go. Maybe it's a chance for a few of our championship rivals to get some points on us here today. Uh, but we're going to see how it goes. Oop, there we go. Got a nice start. Oop, we're on the outside a bit here. So we don't want to get caught up in any crashes. Oop, a bit of bumping barging. Oop, track warning, track warning, my bad. Oh, whoa, whoa! Bugger. That's not what we want. Well, that does a bit of a dent in the championship. Right, let's see if we can recover anything. Okay, so we're catching back up to this back group. If we could get for some points, that would be good, but we're a bit of a way off the main pack. At the time of recording this episode, it was after the the news that they've um, lifted, not lifted, raised the age for uh, competition in the Moto3, uh, the age you're able to 
uh, be in the Moto3 World Championship. Sorry for my muddled up words there. Uh, so instead of it being 16, it'll be put up to 18, which I mean is a good decision. You know, safety is always paramount. Um, but like a few of the other riders said, in regards to the different world paddocks, they're not entirely sure how that's meant to stop dangerous riding, other than it's just probably on the assumption that the people racing are a bit older, um, have a little bit more responsibility to them. But at the end of the day, a race is a racer, and if there's a gap, they're going to go for it. I mean, Valentino Rossi didn't get to where he was because he, um, you know, didn't make aggressive moves. But in the overall scheme of safety, um, yes, it is an important step. There's also been a reducing of um, grid sizes, of grid, the amount of bikes that can be on the grid. So I think now it's reduced to around, oh, we've gone a bit wide there, roughly about 30. 32 max, I think, in regards to the World Supersport category over in the World Superbike paddock, which currently has uh, about 40 riders in its field. So, um, you know, of course, the deaths of um, Dean Berta Vinales, Hugo Milan, uh, and Justin, uh, Jason De Pasquier. Uh, this season, this year, have prompted a lot more of a review into the, the safety of the Road to Grand Prix Racing, World Grand Prix Racing. So I think it's definitely a necessary step to be doing these sort of things because it's just tragic to lose uh, riders that young to the sport. Um, you know, we want as many people to be involved in motorsport and particularly motor racing as possible um, and yes there's always going to be a risk but you want it to be you know safe as safe as it can be uh, without reducing um, the way in which strong good hard passing happens so Anyway, we're seeming to climb onto the back of the points positions here. So we could be relatively okay to score ourselves some points, get in the slipstream. There we go, we have got ourselves in the points. Oh, we got a crash there. Ooh. Lucky we missed that. So we've done an okay salvage job here. Certainly not a bad position at all. Oh, aggressive move up the inside there. See if we can get through for 11th. Yes. Oh no! Ah! All that hard work undone. Oop. Sorry about that. Well, that's not entirely what we were wanting. That's not the way we want it to go. Okay, let's just try and bring this home. Okay. That wasn't too great, but ups and downs happen in the championship all the time. So, we did, however, get the fastest lap of the race, and we didn't finish last, so that was pretty good. Okay, not too bad. So, we're still ahead in the championship with 91 points. 
Uh, and 23 points behind us is Ivana Tola. Okay, so not the greatest race, but we're going to go to Austria, pick our heads up and see if we can do better. All right, that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye.